Folks, welcome back to the CCL week number three. Bravo stream. My name is Seymour covering Rome now into the second match of the day. We got McPherson Bulldogs versus Oklahoma State, but I'm not here alone. I got Mick alongside me. Mick, I know you just came off a hot game five round 11 1v1. How you feeling though? I'm feeling good, man. We sat there, really went the distance in that last matchup, so I'm super excited to see the conclusion of it, especially moving into this next lineup we got. I mean, looking at the maps overall, looking at how those teams really performed, it was just a banger from start to finish, just some close scores, some close calls. Even then, both S&Ds went to around 11, but yeah. that's all behind us. We've determined the victor. BGSU finds himself another, we another win here in another week, but as we move along, uh, we got a new matchup on our hands. We got we, we got two new teams, man, and some new maps as well. Two new teams, five new maps. Bokash to start us off in Berlin to finish it, but you look through the meat of it. We got Tuscan Search and Destroy map number two. Control, brand new to the week as well, getting into it. I mean, it looked good the first time around, so we got Tuscan this time around. Hard point on Tuscan. If it does go to map four, and like I said, Berlin to close things out on that fifth one it is going to be important but let's talk about these two teams make because there's a story behind them we got mcpherson bulldogs versus oklahoma state university and i mean the head-to-head -head, it's looking pretty interesting yeah it most definitely is look at what these two teams are really fighting out for is going to be it's going to be massive i mean looking at their division looking at their pool and the people they have to go up against i mean i don't even need to mention all the teams i can just go ahead and mention that these two are in the same pool as the Ottawa Braves. So yes. that, that's fun for them. Is, is it not? Is it not fun to go ahead against the likes of the number one team here in the nation? But honestly, they're not really too worried about it. They just go ahead and wipe that off. They find themselves going to a pretty good, solid record here for the season, sitting at three and one each respectively, and both finding themselves a pretty good title here for the nine in terms of seeding as well. It's definitely going to be scary when you have the previous champions. Not just that, three top 25 teams in your yep. division. It's going to be hard to make it into that top cut, but, I mean, you might be able to pull through with the stats you have right now. But with this head-to-head, -head, let's move over and introduce our McPherson Bulldogs. A brand new team into the year of the CCL 2021. And, honestly, they are looking to make waves, like you stated. I mean, 3-1 not too shabby but you look at them i mean jerb b-dubs rosso tax i mean this squad of four looking to go head to head with okst now and it's gonna be a tough one in their eyes yeah most definitely is i mean you can already see their record so far things across the board being a little bit iffy i mean with that hard point still having the advantage obviously winning out most of their games but search and destroy being three and two everything looking extremely close so far and on the other side of the field it's the same exact kind of resume just a little bit less numbers to be dealing with so I mean, these teams winning most out most of their stuff, but honestly, it really just comes down to who's that much better. I mean, with them having experience winning and losing so far, they're not going to be too scratched up about it. They found themselves a little bit of practice weeks here and there, but as it stands tonight, this is where things really start to hunker down, saying we're facing somebody with the same record as us. This is going to be a little bit stressful, and I mean, as we get ourselves into the later stages of the season, it comes down to who can really just define themselves a little bit more so. And that is your McPherson Bulldogs, but I mean... You got a tough opponent against just, uh, them, Mick. Like we've been stating, I mean, Oklahoma State University. Let's head over to our way team, see their matchup right now. Who's going across the table to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some Bulldogs? It's Jinja, Wilkish, Dakota, and Royal. You know, second or the second time in a row, you know, back from the 21 season. Now Royal here with the team. And, you know, I think he's the one of the only ones in the team. I know Dakota from last year, but... They've been looking good off the hot, off the rip. Oh, they most definitely has. I mean, three of these players actually returning. You got Jinja, Dakota, and Royal all being now on this roster still. They know exactly how each other work. I mean, they've sat there and played an entire season with each other. They know the ropes. They know how their play styles really go ahead and start to cooperate with each other. They have that synergy. They know how they play out. And they know how to allocate those responsibilities to each other. So, Honestly, I'm expecting the blow up here in the start, but McPherson, once again, being a new coming squad, we really haven't seen too much out of them besides the impressive start they've had so far. So whether or not they can come out explosive today, that could really determine a lot and how the momentum shifts out for the rest of the series. And that's going to bring us to Bokash Hardpoint, our map number one of this matchup. When you're talking about these two teams and the match, the the maps that we have along the way, Mick. But let's highlight some keys to victory right now. I'm gonna be looking at McPherson though, the Bulldogs coming into this. What do you need out of them if they want to get a good start against Oklahoma State? Catch them by surprise. Really, that's all it comes down to. Be a little bit more aggressive. Know your roles that much better. I mean, 
uh, what I could sit there and say about them. I feel like their roles aren't really all that defined. I feel like they haven't really filled themselves out as much. We don't see the same number of synergy as we do out of the likes of Oklahoma State. So honestly, I'm hoping you've gotten yourself enough scrims, enough practice, enough play on the ranked ladder, enough real just, I would say, casual play even. Just that translates as well. Just playing as a unit, knowing your roles, knowing how everybody really cooperates on the field, and just letting your teammates do the best job they can. I mean, your ARs, stay in the back, slay out, rotate around the map, set up for these spawns. Meanwhile, SMGs, they got to know how they play off each other as well. That's your own dynamic duo that you really got to play with and know how to operate. But as we already go ahead, get in here, we see P1 now up for grabs. He's going to find these first bloods, these first kills. It's looking like B-Dubs with possibly a good start, but falling a little bit short. Let's tell us starting D and I like how you highlight the assault rifle players and in comparison to the SMG players, it's Bokosh, it's fast, it's furious, and it's shock full of these flex players as well. You're looking at three to run the map McPherson in for time early. A lot of red in the kill feed, so a hot start indeed, taking them by surprise as you look at that Oklahoma State now. They get flipped out early. B dub's gonna catch him on the rotation. Snaps onto the second, not gonna get it. A big break from Oklahoma State. Early on into this hill number one, but now they're going to be focusing on flipping out the map, and is that, that's exactly what you get out of them. Yeah, you can already look at that in little mini map there in the bottom left. All these teams just fighting out around there on P4, trying to just hold out that side, trying to find themselves a little bit of a cutoff to say, all right, well, they rotate to P2. Who cares? We have the upper hand. We have the higher ground. We can find these slaves, and right there, Kenja and Roll able to find plenty of their own. So you can see the map, how it's spread out. The spawns are still going over to the side of Oklahoma State right now. So you can see the way they're positioning themselves, playing things slow and steady, just looking to go ahead and bite out that time, play the easy game out, and just go ahead and suffice with what they got and possibly get some slays and translate to some time. Over to Tank Royal. Finds one over a second on the back end. McPherson going to be picking up some good time right now, but it's a flurry of kills for Oklahoma State from the break out of barn. They're going to hop into this hill, flip time in their own fashion. Now, nine-point game, and it's only hill number two, so it's kind of going toe-to-toe -to, -toe to feel each other out now. Oklahoma State are going to eclipse the lead that McPherson got early. Royals on a five spray. This glide bomb in his pocket, playing for the strafe and run. Seven and two, six in a row, Mick. What a start at Oklahoma State right now, but Royal, is he going to find any more? No, he's going to get shut down by Teeny. And even then, in the meantime, sure, you found yourself some great frags on the outside. You got ahead and bought plenty of space for the rest of your team because Dakota's just sitting on side all comfy like saying, look, I'm just going to go ahead and accumulate a lot of points in the meantime. I know I'm an AR player, and I'm not really supposed to be here, but who cares? I'm still getting time for the team. I'm still doing my job. We're all doing our due diligence here at the end of the day. We're just going to make sure to translate over to this next site. Find ourselves sitting on P3. This is where things get really bloody. You've got to find the right crossfires. Your ARs have to position themselves pretty far back and just look through some windows and contribute whatever they can. And you can see Oklahoma State getting pretty aggressive with it, looking for some time, but instead just finding that big contest. Possibly a little too aggressive. They do come out with the kills. Four down for the Bulldogs. Oklahoma State going to be pushing their lead even farther. 30 seconds here. Still spawning in the back. Bulldogs looking to get a break for this remainder time. And the break's going to be coming through. Teeny finds two. Royal splits the difference. He's going to find the player from the side. Here comes the rest of the Bulldogs. And Jinja finds two. Royal finds two. Another four down in Oklahoma State. They're pushing their lead farther. They're the most definitely are. I mean, they're finding their stride, they're finding their momentum, and they're buying into it as much as they can. Saying, look, Genji, you're going off, Chief. Go ahead. Keep on doing it. You're sitting on a six freak. We just saw Royal find himself one as well. So that's two glide bombs to be playing with on the side of Oklahoma State. It just comes down to when they want to use it. I'm sure they're going to be waiting on this next site. Saying, look, it's going to be right there in the open. We know that players can be able to get picked off fairly easily. If we can just go ahead and cut off these rotations, find ourselves a pretty massive bomb there in the center of the map, that should be an easy way to clear out a site and get ourselves a little bit more time. Team of three finds four in a row right now, working for that glide bomb. Barn occupied right now by Oklahoma State. Royal, Royal, okay. Turns up, four kills go his way as quick as possible. He's going to be on another spree, shut down before he turns it into anything. Still has the streaks in the back end. Oklahoma State slaying out behind this barn. Dakota on the inside. Sidearm's going to be out. MP40 is going to beat him out. Jerb is going to find two in a row to keep this hill tied. 14 seconds left before we go into this hill number five. You're looking at the rotations. Oklahoma State, they're going to be here again, but keep your eyes on TF3. Could be the difference maker. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at Oklahoma State and how they're playing this game. Saying, you know what? Give them the scrap time. Let them go ahead and fight for scraps because Honestly, we're just really bathing in time right now. We have ourselves so many points to be dealing with. We're double the score of McPherson right now. We're finding the slays. You see Ginger right there pushing on the side, doing a great job with that MP40, putting the pressure on, making sure they can't react and just saying, all right, we get it, you're newcomers. Let's go ahead and take advantage of that. 
we're guys, we're vets here in the scene. We sat there and been here for a long time. We know how to put the pressure on. We know how to put the ball in your court. Now, come on, baby. Push us on site because we're accumulating more time. TR, Ginger, around it, shut down. There's the opening now for the Bulldogs. Can they find the difference, though? Can they slay on El Royal? Wilkish, they turn up big for a three-piece. Oklahoma State still collecting times. They eclipse triple digits now into the hill. As you're thinking about the first set coming up next, still 20 seconds of scrap time that Bulldogs would love to have, but back in for the push. They break once again. TF3, last one standing for the Bulldogs. He's going to go down. Scrap time to Oklahoma State. We're going to the second set, Mick. I mean, you can see the scrap time coming over in P5 to P1. You're not really worried about just giving the scrap time over. This is such a short transition from one side to the next that you can go ahead and pick up all the time and be there ready for the next. Especially when you have Oklahoma State, they are slaying out, doing a great job being now in an 80-point lead and resetting McPherson spawns all the way to the back as they're just really settling down on the side. Just getting ready on the edge, waiting for a push, waiting for the right players to come in at the time, and there you go. Roll on the edge, just getting aggressive with the MP40 and doing his job. Can we talk about Royal for a second? One set of rotations, and he's 25 and 9. Yep. That is a disgusting scoreline, Mick. He is going to fall. Bulldogs are going to take him down. But, I mean, that is a catalyst play player for why they're up 126 to 54 after one set. Teeny now on screen, trying to pull things back for the Bulldogs, looking for the rotation. Takes down Jinja. Now wrapping around the outside, player to meet him. Big one-on-one -on -one here for Wilkish, and he's going to fall. Heads up play from Wilkish is going to shut down the overextension, and Oklahoma State, once again, they're going to win the rotation battle. They most definitely are. You can see the spawns already kind of going over the way. They sit there, know how to set up for this. They did this on P2 last time as well because they had the right side of the map. They went ahead, settled down, said, look, let's push up the middle. We have a lot more space to clear. We don't have a house in our way to look at this site, so it's obviously the more optimal side especially looking at the way our ars are playing so far not really just slaying out like our smgs by any means but definitely given the appropriate support to really just go ahead and clear out the space make sure our jobs can be that much easier for us and it's definitely going ahead and translating this in time you can see him now being at a 90 point differential a massive lead now already hitting that 100 point mark and almost nearing 200 at this stage Notini again 19 and 19 trying to bring his team back in at your Looking the wrong way on the inside is going to drop. Beat up last one closest to this time. Finds one in the back. Traded out, though. Another four down for the Bulldogs. And as I said, I mean, a lot of these players are trying their best for the Bulldogs to bring this back. But a lot of individual gunfights. And that is not what you like to see here in a scrappy map like Bulldogs. You need to play together. You need to play systematic. And if you're looking at anybody, Teeny has been doing quite the job. He's going to find Royal three down now for the Bulldogs. Around the corner, inside this hill. Granny's going to be right now. Spawns favoring Oklahoma State. But Teeny looking to pull this back three in a row. Bulldogs on the inside. 60 to 161. 100 point lead. This is where they can start bringing things back, though. If they're going to spawn him out, Teeny looking for fourth. No, it's going to be Jinja setting things up for the break. Wilkish to follow up on that. Bulldogs still coming out with the majority of kills on the inside, but a very contest heavy heal. Bulldogs, they need to start converting this into time. I think that's yeah, exactly what they're doing. They're going ahead, finally slowing things down. I think it's completely warranted. The way they're slowing down, you know they're setting up for a break. You know they're setting up for a massive push in the middle of the map. And, I mean, it's really paying off. You can see them now picking up the time. You saw Dakota with a pretty massive 2K there. Now just looking to follow through as well. I mean, did he get, get picked off? But it's not that big a deal. The rest of your team's there for the backup. Everybody's really just doing their part. Everybody's finding their right angles. And, sure, you're not getting the crosses. You're slacking here and there. But with the way Oklahoma State's slaying out right now, I don't think they're concerned about that. They're winning these individual fights. They're trying to play their lives out as much as they can. And almost everybody's doing their own game right now. Another four down. Oh, still a 100-point lead. And like you said, everybody's doing their own thing right now. And Royal just leading them 40 and 17. Astronomical numbers. And this one's not even done just yet. He could be looking at 50 at the end of this, Mick. He's been having a standout game one, an icebreaker here against the Bulldogs. A statement game out of the Oklahoma State. Looking for another break here. Jinja does drop. Teeny's going to find him. Quick three down for Oklahoma State. Still finding the break, though, is Royal. And he's just going to make the heads-up play here. Pushing for Granny. He's going to flip things out so that Oklahoma, they can win the rotations once again, Mick. And I love what Roll's doing here, man. Just playing his best game. You can see that he's not having the most sight time. I mean, that's completely fine. You're not seeing an objective. You're getting those kills. You're making sure your team are safe on side. The reason none of these other players are getting nearly as much kills is because Royal is taking the front end of that. He is fighting these fights. He is making sure to bring the battle to the likes of McPherson and not even letting them touch the site where the rest of his team never even has to get into that conflict. Instead, you see Jin just sitting at a minute and 30. Dakota sitting at a minute and nine. Everybody just going ahead, settling down, having them 
themselves a nice, easy little stroll through the park. Meanwhile, Royal is just bringing absolute war onto this field. As he is, four down, Teeny. Inside the first hill, 219 and counting. You can close this out here. He needs some players to go big. Another glide bomb's gonna drop. Royal is gonna find TF3. Still spawning out around the break. Bulldogs, they find the inside. Here comes the trades. Jinja back into the hill. 26 seconds. Plenty of time to put this one away. Strafing run's gonna be called. Looking to flood people in. Looking to flush things out. TF3 still finds the trade. Jerp to follow up before down. Bulldogs, they stay alive for now. They find themselves one more point to say in this game, but how long would that last? You see 10 seconds on the clock. If you're all Oklahoma State, you're not too worried about that scrap time. You're saying, look, oh man, we didn't put him in the 100 point club, but that doesn't matter. We only need 15 seconds left. Set up for P1, boys. Guarantee ourselves a win right here. It all comes down to whether B-dubs can really come through, but instead with now three players being slayed out, everybody going ahead, going back to their spawn. Jerb trying to look for some time. They're not going to let it happen at all. Oklahoma State just settling down. Dakota with that automaton sitting on the edge, fighting a double, just making this win look that much easier. 241. We're going to close things out now in this hill. One, Dakota still has the strafing run. One last push for the Bulldogs just to push things even farther for themselves. Four seconds. And this one's going to be gone. Last couple seconds. Oklahoma State. What a map number one. A statement. 250-101, Bokash. It is just their map to win. And you're looking at Royal just leading the charge for the whole squad the whole time around. 50 and 24. 5k damage. A monster. And usually, you know, that's great and all. And usually he could go ahead and have a backup if you're McPherson, especially saying, okay, not not all that bad. He found himself a 40 bomb on us. Go ahead, wipe it off. Go ahead and bide your time and say, okay, just it's just rust on the bucket. Who cares? It's something that's not all that big a deal. You're on Bokaj going to Tuscan here for the next three maps. Another SMG heavy map for the next three consecutive maps. Um... Yeah, you got to slow that guy down. That, do. That's that's really it. <laughs> it's 100%. I mean, you even look at it. Like, if you're going to let Royal do that to you on control, you are going to have trouble just picking up any of those objectives. And if you're going to exactly. let him do that to you on Search and Destroy, you're always going to be keep looking behind you for if he's flanking. I mean, 36 untraded kills. These are just numbers that Jeez. players wish to put up. Put, wish to put up, Mick. But... A great way to start off this series for Oklahoma State. Map number two, the search and destroy. It's where you got to pull things back. We're headed to Tuscan. I mean, when you talk to him, you already said Royal needs to be checked on it. Where can you start if this team wants to pull things back? Just don't get too close. Don't find yourself in these close quarters of the map. There's a lot of alleyways. There's a lot of kind of small corners, a lot of small contested areas that you're going to find yourself sitting in. And I'm sure Royal's going to go ahead and keep a check on every single one of those. Even if he's not in those areas, he's going to be waiting for the calls. He's going to sit there and be bloodthirsty. And once his teams make those calls, he's going to say, sweet, I'm on my way. I'll be there in a second, baby. Just go ahead, sit in the corner. I'll take care of the kills. And I'll just go ahead and ride out this map. And you can see that's what he did in this one. He didn't even have to ask for the calls. He just went ahead and made the calls himself and told his teammates to just go ahead and kick out the lawn chair. And once another site translates over, say, all right, we'll just pick it up and move it. Sure, that sounds like a lot of work to you. I'm so sorry. I'm out here literally slaying everyone as it looks right now. How do you think my job it is? It's fun, but goodness gracious, is there a lot of pressure on the line? And you can already see the way they've done that. So, I mean, already McPherson, their point average, when it comes around to winning these hard points, the entirety of the season has been around 75 thus far. They just got beat out by 150. That is something that can't be ignored. And knowing that, you've got to win these SNDs. You've got to win these controls because hard point looks to be out of your control at this stage. And it kind of brings us back to that overarching storyline for this division is that you have three top 25 teams make. I mean, these are not numbers that you want to put up if you do want to break into that top cut. You have to look to improve in certain situations, and slaying looks like it's one that really kind of favors the opposing team now. When you are going against competitive teams like Oklahoma State right now. So we get a little bit of a fly-through of Tuscan. We're getting these players set up for the search and destroy, folks. If you're just tuning in, this is match number two of the College Cod Bravo stream, week number three. If you want to go check out more action, College Cod over the Alpha stream, they are live right now, and they are kicking it. Just like we are here. And if you want to support your school, if you're here to cheer on your squad, hashtag CCL2022 on socials. Even in Twitch chat. Let's see the school spirit. Let's get things going. 
Let's get this party started. Tuscan search and destroy. We're hopping on with TF3. Bulldogs on attack. Let's see where they go. Even then, you already see him going to the middle of the map, looking for some peaks, looking for some kind of cheeky kill there. I mean, TF3 trying to grab whatever intel he can, knowing a player possibly was there towards the edge, but he didn't take the shot, so he wasn't feeling very confident about it. But what you can hit, go ahead and do with confidence is plant that bomb. Make sure to put the timer on the likes of Oklahoma State, but even then, you grab that first up as an exchange. B dub is out of the count. Right away. A few kills. 4v2. Bomb down. You gotta worry about the one watching the bomb. On the outside, Teeny. Get big kills. Trades oh, come God. out, and there they go. TF3 lasts alive and lasts a fall. Quick couple kills, and it is going to be a near flawless round number one for Oklahoma State. Three players left alive. Plenty of time for Jinja to get the defuse, and they're going to answer first. Yeah, and looking at McPherson, the way they played Search and Destroy so far, obviously being positive in record, I mean, one thing I've really noticed about them and something I went ahead and noted down was, I mean, their post plants really haven't been the strongest. I mean, they don't go ahead and really acknowledge the roles all that much. I mean, with the assault rifles and the uh, SMGs, setting up the correct crossfires, able to go ahead and hold those aggressive angles. We don't see them allocating those appropriately across the board, so it really just goes ahead and chokes them up for how much area they can cover once that bomb's down and how well they can defend it. But Oklahoma State looking to go ahead and repeat history, go right for the A-bomb, go ahead, find themselves a plan if they can go ahead and just find it. The thing is, they're just playing it easy and simple. They're playing it slow. Sitting right next to that bomb, you can smell the gunpowder. thing is, can you see any blood as well? Dakota cooks the late nade. I'm finding B-dubs there, spots him, shots out. Nobody would fall just yet. Bomb hasn't been attempted yet over at A. You do see a player set up to watch the extension. Couple from Bulldogs. Looks like they want to flood on through. Player number seven, Wilkish. A lot to deal with right now. He's going to find one of the trade there for TF3. Still 3-3, but Dakota answers back. Numbers now to Oklahoma State. They're going to get this bomb down. And now Bulldogs, they got a big job to do for the retake. Most definitely do. I mean, in a 3v1 now, it was sitting at a 3v2 until TF3 decided to go ahead and tap out a little bit too early. I mean, Jerb on the outside, this could be a crazy play if he finds himself one, which he does. Looking for a second, having an MP40 in hand as well. So, it's a great secondary. You've already grabbed yourself a pick. You've gotten a lot more resources in hand, but can you find the frags behind Ooh. it? Instead, you go ahead and see Oklahoma State on your screen once again to find themselves around. Now sitting at 2-0. McPherson, once again, going to be on the offense, having to learn from their last experience. You know, I like it, though. Jerb just flying over it. He knows you got to push something. you got to be proactive there. He tries to get the jump of the player. A little bit of surprise action. It just doesn't pay off. Jin just snaps to him, shuts it down, and they already 3-1 to one that looked unwinnable. Oklahoma State just finished the job. you got to think that Wilkish, you know, finding that player on the extension, getting that information on two was so big, allowing B-dubs or allowing Dakota to find a second onto B-dubs. Give them numbers, get that bomb down, and putting TF3 in an almost unwinnable situation. Now Bulldogs back onto the attack. Let's see if they can get something going already. Not the greatest start. Dakota's going to find Jerb for a first blood. Bomb going down again, but as this objective goes down, Mick, constantly losing players. It's already three out of the mix. Bomb is there. Plenty of time to work with. A 4v1, and Ginger's already on the job. They know exactly where TF3 is, and he's just hiding. Little get him behind and seek in Oklahoma State right now are the Hunters. I think they're just looking for the kill. They don't even care about the defuse at this point. You can see him just getting over antsy, just going ahead, beating the man down, or at least attempting to. You go ahead, give him one life. Wilkish going to be at the, the bottom hand of that. But, I mean, the defuse comes down. Oklahoma State finding their third. Things are not looking good for McPherson. I mean, they find themselves getting over antsy on this A side every single time. I think, I mean, once you get to this stage in the game where Oklahoma State is already sitting at three rounds, Try to switch things up. Go to B. I mean, just try something different because OKC has your number right now, and they are calling it every minute they can. Three quick rounds, Mick. I mean, these are quick rounds. You yeah, know, you, they are. You thought Royal was going to be the problem. After what we saw in map number one, Dakota, 5-1. and one, Your AR player just locking things down on the outside here at A, constantly finding picks for the team. That's going to make it even harder for things. Player number five, Jinja, the objective carrier, gets into the bomb site. Royal again, first blood for Oklahoma State. It's been four first bloods in a row. Dakota looking to double down, but the oh. sniper B dubs. He gets the trade. Mm, B dubs is sounding good, especially when you bring sniper plays like that. Man's a Ooh, walking you know advertisement it. to me. I mean, you know I it. just. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Amen. I mean, honestly, I mean, we couldn't <laughs> still go ahead and really find out enough time. 
I mean, looking at the way, though, I mean, Oklahoma State is just equally as hungry as we are. I mean, you can see the frags they're putting onto the field. They're finding themselves first bloods time in, time out. It's the only consistent denominator they've had the entirety of this game. And it just doesn't stop once you get there. I mean, usually a first blood will go ahead and say, let's play things slow. But B-Dubs once again doubling down. Almost redeeming a coupon there. Two for one today, baby. I got the sniper in hand. Let's see what we can pull out. Making it now a 2v1. Royals back is up against the wall. Yeah, Jerb, a little bit of window shopping. Royal, though, getting a better time. Turns this into a 1v1. Look at B-Dubs positioning. Has made the heads-up oh, no. play, but I love this. Royal, he's oh, going to burn the streak. No. And B-Dubs better run to the hill because this glide bomb, oh, it's got no. your number. <laughs> Oklahoma State, four rounds in a row, and Royal, the problem child right now of Oklahoma State, keeping things going their way. I love the security, though, honestly. I expected OKC, okay, I expected Royal, knowing what kind of player he is, loving to get up in people's face and loving to win those gunfights in an honorable manner. I mean, just playing, okay, you know, I don't want to risk this. I mean, this is a free round. We find ourselves sitting at 4-0 now. I could have gotten overzealous knowing if I pushed that site, he was going to keep his eyes on that bomb. He was going to be somewhere relatively close and looking for some kind of flank to where I'm playing defense. And instead of saying, glide bomb, I know where he is then. It makes my job 10 times easier. And taking every single easy route is Oklahoma State right now and taking the easy route to what could look like a 6-0 if we don't see McPherson step up. Yep, Royal now from two kills in the last round. Found four, last round four. An ace. Now, on attack, Bulldogs looking for their first inside of Tuscan. Not a lot of proactivity, more reactive. And it's just because of players like that, Royal, another first blood. That's five first bloods in a row, Mick. It's just not helping your case. When you're trying to pull things back in this game, you said this is looking like a 6-0, and I have not seen anything to answer back. Finally, Royal's going to drop first death of the map. It's at the hands of TF3, so it trades it out, evens this up. Jinja in a big two-piece right here. TF3 is going to go down, but not expecting the second one. Tons of ideas there. Stun's going to find him. Nose is peeking out. Jerp there. Oh! Jinja, two of them. Leaving B-dubs now in a 1v3. He's put the sniper away. He has the automaton. Now in hand, 30 seconds to make a play. Make bomb as well in back pocket. Is going to find Wilkish on the rotation, but now his positioning is given away. And you can see the rest of the players on Oklahoma State. They're going to rotate accordingly and adjust to this information that they did get. B-Dumps, who recovered an MP40, heading over to A. Maybe, maybe can squeak away with this bomb plant. I don't know. Again, you're hearing that. Getting the auto cue and saying, all right, I'm going to make the move. You already find yourself getting into a 5-0 state with Oklahoma State. And that's a big problem now. This is where we're looking at the end game. We're looking at OKC being one match off and... One thing I love to see is that first blood. And we saw OKC knock Teeny out so hard, he left the lobby for a little bit. I think they hit him so hard, the router tapped out. And something like that, obviously jokes and all. But I mean, McPherson, once again, being on the attacking side, moving to A every single chance given, that they're just not making any adjustments. That's all it comes down to. s d is a mind game as much as it is a game of frags. And you can really set yourself up to have the advantage. But instead, we never see McPherson making those adjustments, never going to another side of the map. They rush down there in the middle, look to the left, and there you go. You meet him in the middle. Dakota wins that frag. And then McPherson, once again, sitting in a 3v4 where they can barely win it with all four. Yeah, first hit to be in. It's leaving Bulldogs a little bit scattered. Dakota, once more, first blood for Oklahoma State. In the back, Jinja. Oh, he's going to expect Jerp here. No. Wow. Shots going to be there for the chase. Jinja on the exit stays alive. Now, Wilkish knows there's going to be players here. So, you see Oklahoma State with this bomb down are going to rotate. Kills going their way. Jinja around the back is going to find beat ups, leaving Jerp Jer in a 1v4. Now, 1v3. Players know where he is. Wilkish is going to find him. And Oklahoma State, a flawless 6 0 in the search and destroy to go up 2-0. 250 to 101, now 6-0 in S&D. Things are not looking good for the likes of McPherson, and we got to see what I've mentioned the entirety of this S&D so far. Adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. They have to take note of what's going on. They have to figure out how they're playing this game so far. They're not going, like, with zero kills across this entire series. They're not getting stopped to such an extent where they can't play the game and they're looking at a death screen the entirety. They just have to go ahead and look for a different approach to everything. It looks like everything feels extremely static. And even if it is static, it doesn't feel static after the post plant. I mean, just so much inconsistencies there that, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit lackluster when I'm looking at McPherson here. And honestly, they have a good squad. I've seen some great plays out of them. Teeny stepping up in that last map on hard point so far. And I mean, all the players having a very, very satisfying even spread across the board for those top three. But I mean, overall, when we come into control, this is the debut week for control, Seymour. It is the this debut is, week. 
This is the first week for control. These players have not touched this mode. They have not touched this, or they just touched the map. But even then, it's left a sour taste in McPherson's mouth. I, really I don't is. know what they got to do here. I mean, they really have to step it up. Even then, if they do go ahead and win this out, they have to go ahead and have some kind of rebound. Say, look, sweet, we finally won Tuscan. We got to go back to it to hard point. That hurts. McPherson's really got to go ahead. I don't know what kind of ammonia they got laying around. I don't know what kind of air freshener they got just plugged into the room so far, but something's got to wake them up. Well, I mean, you talked about, you know, adjustments in the search and destroy, and I, I wish I saw them too. I mean, yeah. beat ups was turning up with the sniper. I mean, you said it to yourself. It looked delicious. It looked like yeah, a walking sponsorship, in fact, how good he was. I would have hoped to see, you know, Bulldogs maybe – play around those opening picks you know that he is going to find one maybe two on the outskirts of a and if you can wait for that first blood to come through you guys can really get lives numbers on oklahoma state to put some pressure on but we just never saw them do that i just i nope. don't see the trust in this team to make that play and the trust that that play is going to happen you see a lot of players trying to make a play and it just falls flat in their face because oftentimes they're just trying to make something out of nothing so going into this control I want to see some proactivity as a team, not just as four individuals. And I haven't seen that yet of the Bulldogs. So you do need to make some adjustments and control. It's got to be where the reverse sweep has to start for the Bulldogs. And it's got to be convincing for me or else you're right. I mean, this is looking Oklahoma State right now. Yeah, and that's going to be hard to do. Building that trust right here on the fly when your life is on the line sitting at an 0-2 record against OKC. And even then, we mentioned it earlier, looking at that roster, looking at the head-to-head, -head, OKC, they have that trust. This is a squad that's been to oh, yeah. most of the teams. You find one outlier, sure, not that big a deal. These other three players who are stepping up, playing the game at such an outstanding level, they trust each other. They know each other. And on top of that, they played an entire season of control in the CCL with each other. They did. That's an adjustment. I mean, we got to sit there. We got to see these guys do a trust exercise right now. Go ahead, do the fall right into each other's arms and if you catch each other say look buddy i got you we have to get these trades we have to get aggressive but we have to make sure to follow through with this because on attacking side that's what it's going to come down to we see so many frags at okc that we're not going to see very much pushes out of mcpherson but on the defensive side they have to make sure to double down they have to make sure to have that turnaround find some kind of rally when they win a defense and say look this is doable they're not unbeatable by any means we got 100 points on them in hard point we may have not gotten any points on them when it came around to search and destroy, but at least got kills. And that's a starting point. Just take a couple more steps and we can see ourselves going in a different direction. Well, folks, while we get this populated lobby going for control, we're going to hop into things. But for now, you're watching the CCL Bravo stream. We're going to cut to a break. We got control over the horizon. Back. Welcome back, folks, to the CCL B stream for week number three. We got Oklahoma State versus McPherson Bulldogs. And Mick. Quick 2-0 to start this one off. We got Tuscan Control coming up next. Let's take a look at our series. Run us through what we've got so far. Well, I mean, you can see right there in, in, in the top. That's uh, that's that's something in the series in itself. Already seeing a 2-0, finding a hard point at a 250 to a 101, then a 6-0 in the search and destroy on, on Tuscan. A lot of bragging rights for Oklahoma State so far, at least in this series. And McPherson just looking to step things up, honestly. Finding themselves in a stage where... During that tiny little break, I think they need to go ahead, get a little group up, get a little hoorah going, a couple shouts with each other, and just get that tick camaraderie up. That's really what they need so far. They've been playing very isolated, not really collapsing too much on each individual player, losing these 101s at a little bit too much, and in control, that's going to really, really let OKC run away with this game. Yes, it is now. Like we say, Tuscan control needs to be where things change, and... I mean, we are highlighting keys to victory for the squad. It started with a lot of trust after that search and destroy. We're kind of the highlights that we were being made or that we were talking about. Things that need to change going to the Tuscan. You need to see a lot more teamwork. You need to stop seeing individual attacks from them because the one-on-ones are usually one-on-twos for, uh, for the Bulldogs and OKSC. They are okay with that. And if you're looking at any player to shut down, we talked about it after map number one. It's got to be Royal. You got to put them in check. Yeah, you most definitely do. Royal is going to be that massive player that you have to lock down time in, time out. Even then in that last matchup, I mean, it's all the SMG players, honestly. I mean, OK, OK State has just been absolutely going off of these SMGs. Their assault rifles haven't been nearly as monumental as I feel as they could be. But, I mean, that's only because there's only so many kills to take in Search and Destroy. You can't really just farm out people. You can't just die time in, time out. 
And at that stage, we sat there and saw the SMGs just take so many kills of the assault rifles. They're like, let us heat up too, man. Come on. You're, you're taking all the glory. You're taking all the fame. We're not able to even play the game right now. We're just playing running simulator in Call of Duty, and that's no fun for us. So maybe in control when you have 30 lives across the board, 30 respawns dished out to each side. Things could twist up a little bit, but you still have to use them as sparingly as possible. McPherson definitely with their backs up against the wall between it and a hard place to figure out whether or not how sparingly they can really play this is a guy where you got to put your foot in the ground, Mick. Of course. Dig deep, dig deep to bring this back. So as we fly through this, and just a reminder for folks who haven't really looked into control, you know, for this year. I know it's new to the CCL. This first week we've seen it into it, and the first time we're seeing it really in a lot of leagues. I know CDL had it in the kickoff. You know, Challengers just putting it in for the recent cut or the recent elites. Yep. But... It's going to be new here for a lot of people. And the first time you're seeing it. So you're looking at point A and point B for the attackers to really capture the objectives. You have a limited amount of time to do so. And when you capture a point, it pushes it to another minute. So when you're looking at all of this, it is going to be the P1 of the hard point where you're looking at site A or control zone A. And P2, where you're looking at control zone B. And when we hop into the game and look underneath the word control, you can see lives remaining. So it's not just the objective that you got to be worried about. You got to be conserving your lives at the same time. And even then, you got to go ahead and at least look for some progress. And there you go. As you find yourself hitting a third of each bar of progress, it goes ahead and locks it out. Finds yourself to guarantee that because the defenders can deter that progress a little bit. They stand on site uncontested. But Oklahoma State going completely uncontested on this side. I able to go ahead and completely secure that point. Find themselves that extra minute already sitting at 2 minute and 15 seconds on the clock with 27 lives still remaining. Looking to push through the middle of the map. Find themselves a kill, but Royal and Dakota both fall as well. So... Royal being kind of a, having a muzzle to some extent, but how long will that last? And can B-Dub step up even more so? Yeah, Bulldogs, they know the job. They know the job well right now. You got to lock down these power positions and let Oklahoma State come to you. B-Dub's on three in a row. Ginger's going to fall as well. He's ready for the next one. Has to reload. Got oh! with his gun reloading. And it's going to be Dakota to shut him down before that glide bomb is going to be picked up. Now, Oklahoma State... Set up for an attack. TF3 again up top with this deadly power position. It's going to shut him down now. Again, thinning the lines of Oklahoma State. They're not going to get a comfortable push right now. Still burning this clock. Minute 33, 22 to 24. And look at this. Here comes the flood. Royals going to find one. Opens things up now for Oklahoma State. Are they going to get this platform control? They are, Love Dakota. This. Nice set. Nade's going to take down TF3. Two kills down. Make it three. It's time for Oklahoma State to set up. And even then, Oklahoma State, you saw the way they set that up. I mean, you saw in the back, Jarrett was just going ahead, having that power play. TF3 as well with that assault rifle, just going ahead, having that lineup. And Oklahoma State knew it was there. They made the calls. They made the adjustments, said, look, we know he's there. Slide under, stay out of his line of sight, and get to the other side and see if you can frag him out. That's exactly what they did, opening up this entire site for them. And they're not even going for it. They know they have the life advantage. They know they want to play it slow. They know McPherson's going to be stressed out a little bit to rush back to the site with how quickly they took A. And they're just taking advantage of this, slaying out left and right in the meantime. Another two kills down. No progression at B just yet. So Bulldogs not really fighting down just yet. It's the lives. That they have to be paying attention to. 44 seconds. The clock's going to be stopped. Jinja on the inside now. Knows a few players there. Big play out of Teeny to shut down that player on the inside before that point gets captured. Dakota again on a spree. Three in a row. A few shots I need to take. Is going to find TF3 on four in a row. Can he get the glide Woo! bomb? Yes, he can. Shriek's going to be in the hand of Dakota now. Is the rest of the team following in suit? 30 seconds to make this play. They got a heavy life advantage and working on the strafing run. If Dakota can pick that up, that is going to be good for the rest of the game. They're looking for the double whammy, having the automaton, the MP40 in hand. Dakota is here, a menace of both long range and short, regardless of what gun you put on them. The man knows how to go off with it. And just absolutely being across the map, a menace everywhere. But uh, McPherson actually making this a competition. I'm extremely impressed so far. Making that life differential fairly even, looking like they can hold out for the defense. B is extremely hard to hold. It's extremely hard to go ahead and get a hold of. And there you go. They found themselves winning that first round. McPherson having the lead here for once in this series. Let's see if they can run away with it. You know, objective efficiency and control is something I can see a lot of teams having problems with. We saw it yeah. earlier trying to get kills turned into time in a hard point in the series you, were, you had uh, prior to this. And we're seeing it again right now with Oklahoma State. I mean, they were getting the kills. Dakota, he went on a six spree. Just yep. Bulldogs are making the heads up play, constantly overextending through church, shutting down those attacks from behind and not allowing Oklahoma State to really get that objective taken care of at A. So already seeing some adjustments into this uh, 
into this game mode number three control and it's gonna allow bulldogs now to take the first round a side's gonna be attacked three kills go out of their way so oklahoma state break that one take of progression few kills as well bulldogs not looking like they're out of it just yet for the series they're most definitely not all comes down to the right strains and the right trades overall and the best placement you can really go ahead and look for and even then mcpherson already going ahead having themselves some kind of a lineup looking to get some pressure in the middle of the map but there you go royal you mentioned it earlier in snd looking for those flanks nah the man's going to be whipping those out in control getting behind getting close to those spawns locking the players in where they really can't get anywhere on the map because even then where oklahoma state would have already captured this first entire point mcpherson is still fighting for it trying to get on a looking for this player they do go ahead and pick off wilkins but in the meantime, you see old Teeny fall off the map there towards the edge. A little bit uh, unfortunate circumstances for him, but it's not going to matter too much if the rest of the team picks up this. They now have two minutes on the clock, 19 lives remaining compared to Oklahoma State's 21 now. Things could definitely still be doable for them if they can go ahead and get the right presence towards the middle and right here in this church. Yeah, you know, it looks like we still have problems staying on the map. Word to Clayster in the CCL. Bulldogs now looking to siege LB. 18 lives, two life disadvantage right now. As TF3 through radio with the help of B Dubs is gonna find one. You have Jinja on the minimap, still able to pinch out these players. Wilkish to open things up now for the retake. Teeny to drop. Royal now collapsing. Two kills Ooh. out of the hands of Bulldogs. And dealing with this relatively easily is Oklahoma State. I mean, they struggled in attacking this. So Bulldogs, curious to see how they go at taking this B site. You know, understand Teeny right there. Trying to get over Zealous, trying to look for some more flags. Uh frags and get that life differential that much more further down the line but i mean right there you had yourself three players stationed here to the right of the church make use of that push yourself onto a site stack the b and then get yourself at least to take a progress to guarantee at least some kind of progression but so far you're sitting in a life deficit you're now sitting at 17 13 make that 15 13 some great kills to come through so far but even then b is still for the taking you only got 43 seconds left hop on it go ahead and double stack it because it's going to make it go that much quicker if you can find the kills there it is tf3 with one there's that first tick with two players rushing the side out of oklahoma state can you hold it down well, it might not be smooth, but they're getting the job done right now. Working on the second take. Teeny shots onto Jinja. Struggles his three kills out of their hands. A retake from Oklahoma State. They weather the storm, but a one life advantage. He's going to be troublesome. B Dub's investing the shriek, and he's going to find a teammate. Oh, Dakota already got dropped, and that is not going to help your case whatsoever. 27 seconds. Now, two life disadvantage. Bulldogs, one last opportunity to get a smooth attack at this B site. And you got to make it look good right now because you don't have the lives nor the time. Even then, look at the spawns. Look at where TF3 is right there in the back of the map, trying to look for some kind of flank. And he goes ahead and gets picked off. So there goes your security there in the front end. There goes your most more player. And you just can't do anything about that. The rest of the team has to step up. They have to win these frags. And when you see El Royal stepping right on the side, diminishing that progress that much more. And the way, how far of a run it's going to be for old McPherson to get themselves on the side. We're going to see Oklahoma closing out of defense, getting themselves on the board as well, now sitting at one and one. We talked about in round one how uh, Bulldogs were muzzling Royal. Well, it looks like he's back into form, 18 and 14, on a five spree before that ends. So he's going to pick up the streak. Uh, going into this third round, uh, you go one for one on the defense, is looking good at the B site. But Oklahoma State, they didn't get that take of progression where Bulldogs, they got two at B. So now, if this goes the distance, if this is just going to be a haymakers of holding B from both sides of the field, you go to that side, and then Bulldogs, they're going to get the better of the, de the defensive sides. In the end, you need to see Oklahoma State find a new adjustment. If they want to take this 3-0, they need to get that B side under control. Yeah, they most definitely have to, and that B site needs to probably be a priority for him. Go ahead and hit that first, but it's not going to matter too much. When you see the flank come through, you see Oklahoma State already finding three players, making the life differential that much more bigger. And it's not that big of a start, but once again, following suit, grabbing A almost instantaneously, getting all the time in the world. You now have two minutes and 20 seconds. Don't repeat history this time around. With Royal moving through the middle of the map, the rest of his team making the frags respectively where they need to, and having the flank here in church, not grabbing the kill, you know the pressure's on, and you know you can find yourself on that side if you grab the right positioning. And two players looking to fly to the spawn, but Bulldogs, they breathe a little bit now. Royal's going to get six in a row. That's a strafing run into the pocket. Drop, though, from Teeny, who's playing up top in that church. 
As again, Bulldogs just weathering with things. Here come the Strays from Oklahoma State. Trying to find an opening. You can't find a team kill here. Jinja's going to get that Dakota. Now two down. Here's the opening you were looking for. It's three off the board for the Bulldogs. You're going to hop onto this B site. Try to set things up while Royals lurking around to lock down this flank. Nobody inbound. Everybody coming from the front line. But B-dubs takes down Dakota. There's an opening now for the retake. Royal shuts down the extension. On site is three down. Make it four. Oh! As Oklahoma State, they open this B site up. Let's see if they can shut it down. And even then, you gotta consider how many players are sitting on top of it. You only have Ginja there right now, so it's not really gonna progress all that quickly. You found one tick of time, that's great. You had the contestant down, do you get the collapse? Now you got two there. You're gonna find yourself almost an instantaneous second tick to work with as the third is counting up. McPherson not pushing on the site, making this almost look impossible for them to get on there. And we're gonna see Oklahoma State find themselves an easy second finding the right positioning, learning from their first time around in this offense and saying, look, we're not doing it again. Yeah, you can see the adjustments, the, the method that they're taking, and it starts with Royal lurking. Top Church cuts down the player up top. You know that the rest of Oklahoma State, they don't have to be looking behind them. So everybody taking the fight, fight on the front line. Three quick kills. Royal comes to the rescue to shut down all four. You get those power positions shut or set up and really shuts things down at B. So now transitioning onto attack. Two rounds in a row for Oklahoma State. Back onto the defense, and... This is where they looked even better the first time around. That B setup was strong. Bulldogs now on the disadvantage. They are going to have to dig deep once more to get things under control. To send us to a round five. Dakota, another set and A to take down TF3, but not before he got Royal. Even though you see one even exchange, you see these players trying to go ahead and step up. You see Dakota trying to step up from the back, able to find two, able to go ahead and prevent that last tick of progress. So that's going to be a great start here for Oklahoma State to make sure they don't fight everything they need to ne make those necessary pushes towards B. But even if it comes around, TF3 just trying to sneak through the map, trying to go ahead and get that little antsiness and know, is this site free? Or do I go ahead and lock out these spawns? And I think that's the option he's going for, trying to go for that roundabout. Meanwhile, everybody's fighting it out on A. Can he make that big of an impact for the rest of this team to push through, make the life differential that massive for McPherson to come out on top. But even then, TF3 with two, so that's a great positioning for the rest of the squad. Can they read out Ginja, though, here in the middle? Or can they do that, Ginja? Finessing around the outside, in for the connection. Is he going to stop things right now? 50 seconds on the clock. Still some players alive on the inside. Ginja working back in four in a row. Doesn't have to take down the fifth. Dakota to help him out. Another two down as they're neutralizing this last tick. While well, this is all happening, player number five beat ups. Tried to get the overextension happening, but winning both gunfights on either side of the field. Oklahoma State, they're doing it all right now with 43 seconds left. Bulldogs, they got to get something going because the kill's not going their way. Ginja looking for the fifth. There's the glide bomb in hands. As now the shrinks come through and the Bulldogs, they're just hoping they can get something together, but they just can't even spawn up. I mean, yeah, this is a massive problem, man. I mean, you already saw the kind of alternate avenue. You saw a lot of players trying to go ahead and push for B, but once again, the Bulldogs trying to back down once again and say, look, let's go for that B again, see if we can get some kind of counterplay. But I mean, with Oklahoma State, you had one player. You had Jinja holding down the entirety of A by himself. You had one player there in the middle of the map, sure. But once he goes ahead and says, look, I'm not killing as many people as I'm used to. I think something that something doesn't seem right here. I'm going to rotate, go to the other side, and it just makes it such an easy read for Oklahoma City to get that rotation, get those kills, and only leave 15 seconds left on the board for McPherson to make a move. As they move towards A, try to get whatever progress they can there, Oklahoma State's going to set up in the middle and say, we're ready for anything. They're trying to push another minute, but Royal, he hops in. He's going to take it. Another four down. Last one on site is TF3. And he's the last one to drop. 11 seconds to make something happen. Royal watching the front line as a race. One by one, they're going to trickle in. And one by one, they're looking to fall. Royal lines oh. up two. Trying to take oh. him down. It's going to be four. Can he make it? A six in a row. He does. But TF3 is going to shut him down. And last one standing. Oklahoma State, they take care of business. A 3-1 in control. And a 3-1 sweep in the series. Most definitely. I mean, we kind of expected this looking at the way they just came in explosive in that hard point. Carrying on that momentum. Finding themselves a 6-0 in Tuscan in the S&D saying, look, let's do it again. We're going right back to Tuscan. We're at home here. We're going ahead. We're fragging out. We're doing our job as efficiently as possible. Let's carry it on to control. Not as flawless as what we saw in terms of that S&D, but still a very impressive standing from the looks of this leaderboard. And I mean, I saw uh, changes from the Bulldogs into this control. A, a bit. You know, it wasn't crazy it wasn't enough to take down oklahoma state but there were changes to look at and there were yep. changes to kind of touch on 
because you can see that i mean this is the start of vanguard season this is the start of the ccl 2022 season and a lot of these teams are going to be new a lot of these teams are going to be playing for the first time maybe even on stream for the first time so there's some jitters to get through there's some things to iron out and it's going to be a while until you are a perfect squad and you might not even get there this time around it could be the building blocks you're looking for well oklahoma state they come out and they showcase that they've been here done that and they've built those blocks adding one new player to the roster hasn't looked to shake things up they look just as good as last year and and, and now going in that going four and one into this year they're looking to change it up and see if they can find new heights yeah, they most definitely are because Oklahoma State last year, I mean, one thing I got noted for them is they didn't really do all that well when it came around to the second split of last year. I mean, once they went ahead, got in the upper bracket area, sat there and really started facing some massive Titans in terms of the CCL, they just really couldn't stick up to the hype. But I mean, with a start like this, with the season how it's looking so far, true, you've already faced one of those Titans. But if anything, that's VODs to look at. Those are reviews that you can make. That is practice that, you, that can be had in your own division to really iron things out. And honestly, with the way they play today against McPherson, who is an equivalent to them, the way they played so far and looking at the record, they could go ahead, refresh this, if they ever want to have themselves a nice, lax little practice. I think McPherson really needs the adjustments. They need some notes to be taken. I feel like Oklahoma State could be a definite opponent to really write down for that. And I like that we're talking about the division here because, I mean, as we highlighted, there's three top 25 teams to be looking at oklahoma yeah. christian icc ottawa braves the previous ccl champions from the 2021 season so there are some big names that you got to take down in with a start like this with the changes that you're making oklahoma yeah. state i mean they could be that wild card that just barely cuts into that top three barely makes it to the top cut but i mean you can make it happen with these changes just expand on them like you said you've already gone up against one look over that vods watch how this team took care of business watch what you can improve on and you very might be well you very might well be seeing yourself kind of get to that top cut and evolve as a squad find that new height and this is a good start that i'm seeing from them i mean the squad of oklahoma state it looks like they're really trusting each other yeah and honestly i'm loving the look of it because i mean i feel like they were done a little bit dirty they could go ahead and have themselves a further run but looking at their new adjusted roster at least in terms of in the context of tonight they've looked outstanding they just got to yeah. make sure to follow through with it. They got to go ahead, just find a way to iron this stuff out, make their map picks a little bit more diverse. Because one thing I do want to pick out on stream for them, because just in case they're watching, their Gavu 2 hardpoint is not looking too good. So that's something that needs to go ahead and be ironed out for them. And overall, I think it's just generally their assault rifle. I mean, we saw their SMG plays be outstanding constantly. I mean, their SMGs were always in the fray always winning those fights and always doubling down and saying i'm not done yet i'm gonna get as many streaks as i can i'm gonna be a highlight player on the leaderboard time in time out go ahead and find a way to make those assault rifles more relevant put them in more kind of hectic spots put them in more bloodbath filled areas so they can get a feel for the action and make themselves more part of that fight to make your job that much easier like say during hardpoint for rotations make sure they're setting up for those spawns SMGs need to be on that site. If they're winning that much, let them win on site. Let them hold down that time. Let your assault rifles do all the dirty work, do all this kind of country running, become a track star, and go somewhere else to go ahead and set yourself up for the next job. So if you do die, which you most definitely will in Call of Duty, make your job that much easier by making the run half the distance of what it could be. I mean, Royal was really phased by that whole thing. They, he wasn't dying on that Bocage earlier. 50 Fair kills enough. on that. So... Maybe you don't always have to die, but you're going to make it look good the whole time when you're playing like that. So, folks, let's take a look back at this series. Not a game five for round 11 like we saw at the start of the day. A lot more clear cut this time around. A 3-0 sweep from Oklahoma State. Started off on Bokash, 250-101. to 101. A 6-0 search and destroy on Toskin. And a 3-1 control to close this one out. Their brooms were out fairly early. They were trying to sweep up the competition and head to bed. A little bit early today maybe even get back to scrims just to level up even farther but after this we have the csun matadors going against csulb sharks in another western division for the pool b and joining me on the desk is going to be tiff mick this is going to be where your road ends for the night it's been a great uh, cast so far mick and i can't wait to see what's coming up next folks we're going to cut to a break and when we come back the last match of the night for the bravo stream